In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the latest updates and newest features for Enscape 2.9 for Rhino. One of those latest features is the ability to create your own custom model libraries in Enscape, and I'll be showing you how to do it step by step. Let's go. All right, so let's take a look at the newest Enscape 2.9 and what it brings us here. So. Uh, if you take a look at this page, this is the latest version of uh, Fanscape 2.9. We have four major updates. First uh, major update is the custom asset library. Then we have video textures, displacement maps and fitness assets. So on this page, you can get some information on what these features mean, what they represent and how you can apply them uh, to your own models. And on this page, you will have some more information about how this uh, new custom asset library works with Enscape 2.9. You can see some of the you know, the basic questions that people are asking, some frequently asked questions, and you can get an idea of how this feature would uh, work in Enscape. Right now we're going to start and I'm going to show you on this model. We have this model from our previous tutorial. You can check it out here, how we model this and how we used Enscape to, uh, to create uh, this model. Okay, so let's take a look and let's see what is Enscape asset at all. Well, what does this mean? This means, for example, if you take a look at here, you have Enscape uh, uh, asset library button. When you click there, you will see a lot of uh, Enscape assets that come with, with Enscape. You can see that you have many different models that you can use in your scene, just like we use some trees in this tutorial. So you have many options to choose from and you, it's simple drag and drop in your scene and you're done. However, now we have this new custom assets tab and this means that we can actually import and create our own assets, our own 3D libraries. So we're not just limited to what we have here. We have right now 2,137 models. We can actually take models from different libraries like SketchUp Warehouse or some other uh, places online where you can find online models. In this particular case, I went to the website called 3dsky.org. I use this website often because it offers free, free models that you can use. And in this case, we're gonna give credit to Steven Dexter. He is the one who created this model. And what, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna take this armchair and we're gonna create it as our Enscape asset model. And then we're going to put it here in our, in our model. So how do we do this? First, of course, you need to have 3D Sky account. Uh, you can simply find any kind of model here that you like. Make sure to use the free models and then click on download. That will, that will download your model. Then all you need to do is locate that folder and put it in your project files. Hey guys, before we move on, if you find this content valuable, I just wanted to quickly invite you to give us a like and subscribe to How to Rhino channel. This really helps us a lot with the YouTube algorithm so we can reach more and more architects and, and show them what Rhino and Grasshopper are capable of. Thank you. Next step is to go to the Enscape and let's open custom assets. And in this case, let's click here. It says create new asset in custom asset editor. Once we click there, we're going to be presented with this new window that is Enscape custom asset editor. And this is the place where we'll actually give some features and upload our model. So I'm simply here going to call it, let's say sofa custom, and I'm going to click on import geometry and choose my model. So here is the folder where I downloaded my model and make sure to use FBX uh, extension because that extension contains material information inside of it. So I'm going to take uh, FBX model, I'm going to click open and now you will see that we're going to have this model loaded up. So we have some kind of like a 3D, uh, 3D viewport where we can use, we can rotate and we can see how materials are going to be applied. That's one thing. Okay, the second thing that we need to pay attention to here is the materials. So you can see that now we don't have any materials applied and you can see in our uh, model that actually has two materials. So how do we get that those materials? All we need to do is you can see here on the left, it says materials and you can see that there are two materials. And all we need to do is go, go to the texture here and choose our texture. You can see that the texture is already located in our folder and we can simply click there and you will see that it will update. Same thing goes with uh, the first material, which is going to be for uh, the wood. So we're gonna take the wood texture and uh, that's gonna be enough. Of course, if you want to make the material a little bit more, you know, if you, have, if you want to add some textures and height and bumps, you can use albedo here, for example, with the bump map and we can have 
a little bit more realistic bump here reflections we can also use a bit of reflections if you want this to be more reflective material but you know this is just like fine tuning the material right now uh, the default is pretty much going to work for us and now let's just add maybe the albedo here for the bump map as well and i think we're gonna be happy with that and of course the last thing that you want to do you want to take the snapshot this is the snapshot of how your model will look like in the enscape asset library so if you like how it looks you can simply you know click here it takes a snapshot and now this will be uh, positioned in your library last thing that we want to pay attention to is the scaling you can see how like when i change these guys you will see that orientation orientation will change so you need to make sure that we have the proper axis if you want to take a look at this snapshot and then look at this meters so this is too big so we need to pretty much make this uh, zero point let's say seven five one three and then we need to put zero in front because this is gonna be much much smaller now this will disappear from the from the thumbnail but don't worry uh, we already saved that and the last thing that we need to do you want to click here on the save project and here in my folder i have a folder called enscape custom asset library i'm gonna click there and i'm gonna call it sofa custom then i'm gonna click save and now we have the project saved and all we need to do is click on generate asset and that will successfully generate our asset you see here it says asset generated that's fine we're gonna close this off and now let's take a look and now i'm going to open my asset library one more time and you will see here that we're gonna have our new sofa that we created so now let's go to our model and let's choose where we want to put this uh, sofa so let's say that we want to put it inside here next to this wall i'm gonna change here the lens length to be something like this so we can have a better idea of the interior and let's click on it and let's position it maybe here and you will see that it's gonna be a little bit below because the the, the actual point is gonna be the middle so we need to, to move this guy on the top so i'm simply going to use the vertex here and i'm gonna move it here in the position okay so once i'm happy with my with, with the position of my sofa i'm going to move it there and let's copy one more time maybe create three and i think i'm ready now let's see how this looks oh this is not what i wanted okay so these uh these actually look like they're they're flipped flipped over and that's fine because if you remember those x y and z coordinates that's where you will uh, set this up so you know what is the, the the proper orientation i'm going to go back and i'm simply going to rotate all of these guys so let's let's come here and let's click on this red arrow let's say minus 90 and we're going to put it here in the position and that's gonna uh, be uh, finalized now and now let's take a look at the endscape and you will see that we have our sofas ready and as you can see all of the materials are are perfectly fine so that's how you create custom models for your enscape library in the extended version of this tutorial which is available on our patreon page i'm going to show you how to use video textures in enscape which is another new feature in version 2.9 and on top of that you will learn how to use grasshopper to randomly scatter and modify enscape assets you will also get access to all of our extended tutorials and project files the link is in the description if you'd like a structured step-by-step -step approach in learning rhino and grasshopper architectural presentation animation rendering you can apply for our running for architects 2.0 course first link in the description